Gotta go fast! Gotta go fast! Gotta go fast! Hey guys, it's time for the second installment of Month of Sonic! Today the game I'm gonna review is, can I take this thing off already? No. Oh dear God. Today the second game I'm gonna review is gonna be Sonic 1 for the Game Gear. And the Master System. This, as a matter of fact, was the very first Sonic game I have ever played. I haven't even played the Genesis stuff beforehand. So this is kind of a sentimental game to me. It's literally one of the first games that I played on a Sega Master System after I played Alex Kidd, so... How well did that age in comparison to the Genesis version? Well, this is why I'm here to review it, so um, let's do this. I missed you, old friend. Oh, now I'm just talking to my hand. So, uh, do you like Sonic? Ah! The 8-bit version of Sonic 1 was first released on the Master System on October 25th 1991. A couple months later, it hit the Game Gear. Although they're practically the same game, the Game Gear's screen is cropped compared to its console counterpart, but thankfully it doesn't ruin the game so much because you don't run as fast. Plus, the Game Gear version is far more common to find, since it's been featured on games like Sonic Mega Collection and the GameCube version of Sonic Adventure DX, which I'm playing on. All you need to do is just get 20 emblems and you unlock it right away, which is pretty easy if you play the story mode. But now, let's talk about the game itself. It's pretty much similar to the Genesis version in terms of the gameplay. You run, you jump, you collect rings, all the good stuff. However, it doesn't mean it plays the same too. Yuji Naka did not work on this version, and you can tell the change of staff is pretty apparent in this game. The controls just don't feel as tight. They feel slippery, and the momentum-based gameplay doesn't really feel that it has a lot of weight to it. When you roll down a slope, for example, you feel that you build up the speed, but the physics don't feel grounded, albeit it is pretty fun to outspeed the screen. However, the worst part is the jumping controls. Sonic slides a bit every time you jump forward, so I find myself pressing the opposite direction just to avoid slipping. Not that it worked all the time. I know I may have rambled about the original creation of Sonic 1 a bit in the last time, but it really makes me appreciate the original game far more. However, there is still plenty to like here, and there are some new levels to explore in addition to the old ones. First up, we have Green Hill Zone, which you all know by this point. While Act 1 is very fast and straightforward, Act 2 has some cool underground segments that spice things up. However, I'm kind of baffled about the next level, Bridge Zone. The biggest problem that I have with Bridge Zone is that, well, just look at it. It looks a whole lot like Green Hill Zone, and there is not much of a difference. It does have more platforming elements than Green Hill, but even that is not used quite to its full potential. And also, the second act has the dreaded screen scroll, you know, that you have to move forward all times. It can also lead to plenty of frustrating moments, like when you get hit by an enemy that just pops on screen, or even worse, when you realize the platform you jump on is behind you, but the screen scrolls so fast that you didn't notice it and you lose a life. Next is Jungle Zone. Wait, Jungle Zone? Bridge Zone, Jungle Zone. Those are the best names you can come up with, Sega. I mean, even I can look at inanimate objects in our room and come up with a better name, like, uh... <laughs> Bottle Spray Zone! Yeah! Despite the simplistic name, this level is by far my favorite in the game. The backgrounds are amazing, especially because it's an 8-bit game, and I really like the fact there are many different paths you can take, like the Genesis games. Also, the usage of logs is pretty cool. You can either run on a log or jump on a log. Everybody loves log. It's long, long. It's big, it's heavy, it's wood. It's long, long. It's better than that. It's good. Act 2 is also very interesting because it's a vertical level that requires players to scale a waterfall by jumping on platforms. It's a very nice change of pace that I wish the game took more often. But enough about new levels, let's talk about a classic level like the next one, which is... Ugh, Labyrinth Zone. Oh great, who needs that crappy Starlight Zone? Just give me more moments when I'm clamoring for air and dying afterwards, please! That being said, this level isn't too bad. If you can stand Sonic's slightly slower movement in the water, you'll be okay. 
Scrub Brain is the next ad. It's not nearly as hard as the Genesis version because you can finish the first act in less than a minute. Maybe it's because we don't have any spinning clips this time. Act 2 is a little bit harder because of all the conveyor belts there, and the fact that the second half of it doesn't have any rings, so prepare to die by those piggies. I hate them. The odd part is Act 3, which is usually the boss act in the game, but this level is nothing but a short maze that ends with chasing Robotnik to the final level. But now, the main reason why I'm talking about the levels again, the final level, Sky Base. Dear Lord, out of all the levels I've talked about in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, this is by far the hardest level I had to endure because of how frustrating it is. Have you ever played Sonic CD and got to Wacky Workbench when you get zapped by those electrical currents? Wanna know where they came from? No? Well, I'm gonna tell you anyways. They came from Sky Base. Those currents go off every six seconds. There are times that no matter what, you gotta get hit by them. Unless you memorize the level completely, which you won't basically do it on the very first time you play. But, well, at least Act 1 gives you rings to work with. Act 2 doesn't. You get hit only once and you're done. So prepare to lose a lot of lives here. But that's not even my favorite part of the level. My <laughs> favorite part is when you see this wall of spikes that's getting closer to you, but there is this bomb that blocks you. You can jump over it, so the only way you can escape is wait for it to explode and then move forward. But if you get hit by the deadly shrapnel, of course you lose a life. So you need to know exactly when to stand in order to pass it. To overuse a picture I do in almost every video... Yay! The bosses in the game are also a mixed bag. Some of them can be pathetically easy, like the Green Hill one. But there is a small catch to all the bosses. You get no rings, one hit, and you're done. Aside of the Green Hill boss, which makes the Volcano Valley boss from Sonic 3D Blast look like anything from Dark Souls, until you learn the pattern of the bosses, this can be really tricky. The jungle boss in particular has this vault you have to jump over, and when you hit Robotnik, you may get knocked back to it and lose a life. So, that can be pretty annoying. However, the final boss is... <laughs> oh wow, how should I put this? Um, I'll sum it up like this. So, one, two, three, four. This isn't the only thing that makes the game hard. In the Genesis version, if you recall, when you lose your rings, you can always reclaim them afterwards once you get back on your feet, giving you a second wind of sorts. But when you lose your rings in the Game Gear version, you only lose one. Oh, and did I mention that you cannot reclaim your rings back? Now, I understand that the Game Gear cannot process so many rings flying off screen, that's perfectly reasonable, but if you can reclaim your rings, you're gonna be more susceptible to hits, which makes the difficulty completely unfair. But without sounding like a negative Nancy throughout the whole review, there is one element that I really liked about the game, which is collecting the Chaos Emeralds. Unlike the Genesis version, the Emeralds are scattered in the levels themselves, one per level. They require the player to do something unheard of in a Sonic game thus far. ACTUAL EXPLORATION! What I really like about it is the fact that you have to think on your feet in order to get some of those emeralds. However, some of those emeralds are placed rather conveniently. Also, I gotta mention that because of the screen crop of the Game Gear version, you'll often miss this platform which forces you to pretty much do a leap of faith. But despite that, defeating Robotnik at the end with all the cast emeralds is very fulfilling. And why? Because of this. I see trees of green Red roses too, I see them blue for me and you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful... There are special stages in the game too, but like the emeralds, they work in a different way this time. When you go past the signpost and you have more than 50 rings, you get access to the special stages, but in addition, if you have less than that number, you can sometimes get extra rings or a life. Though most of the time you gotta get Eggman. I have to say I like the special stages in this game even more than the Genesis one. They're very fast paced, have good music, I love the color scheme, and of course there's a lot of chance to rack up a lot of lives, and also get a continue in the process. Just don't blame me when you get dizziness by those bumpers over there. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Sonic 1 for the Game Gear, despite its obvious graphic limitations, looks really nice. 
While some level looks rather dull like the exterior of the Scrap Brain Zone, some look very lush like the Jungle and Labyrinth Zones. Also, I'm not sure if it's the emulation of Sonic Adventure, but there are a lot of slowdowns here. Especially in Bridge Zone. Oh dear god, it's so slow. Can it get any worse than this? <laughs> the music is pretty good too. It may not be as classic, but it isn't too shabby. The music here is handled by one of my favorite composers of all time, Yuzu Koshiro. The guy behind classics like Streets of Rage, Shinobi, and Act Razor. There are a lot of good tunes here, like Bridge and Jungle, but my favorite track in the whole game is surprisingly Labyrinth Zone. Feels a little bit like a spy movie. Sounds like a spy movie. Shut up, Snake. Well, that's all well and nice, but how does the game fare overall? Let's move on to Final Cut. On a positive side, despite the fact it's 8-bit and the momentum isn't the same, the game is still very faithful to the original. Exploring the levels for Chaos Emeralds is very fun, and the soundtrack is really cool too. On the negative side, the controls are very imprecise, prepared to slip a lot of the times. Getting hit once and then not being able to collect the rings you had is pretty annoying. And the last two levels, especially Skyways, can be pretty boring and annoying. And so, how does Sonic 1 hold up today? It holds up, that's all I can really say. It's actually one of the better Sonic GameCube games out there, but still it has some flaws that I didn't like. In particular, the last two levels are incredibly boring and annoying. But other than that, I think it's a decent game, so um, I'll give it a 6.5 out of 10. So this was fun. I reviewed two games with the same name, but they're totally different games, which is really interesting. So, um, I hope the next game I'm going to review is not also going to be named Sonic the Hedgehog, because I do not want to review Sonic the Hedgehog 06. Oh, okay, good. So, what is the next game I'm going to review then? Next review, Sonic Genesis, click on stuff, I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs>